Hey, what's up, folks? I'm just chilling here at Bowder, playing a new pixel art dash and slash. There, there is, is no light. light. Is it any good? Yeah. Let's take a look. First, let me start off by saying There is no light is a bit of an unusual case. It's one of the few times I've ever started a game and never managed to complete it all the way through. In that sense, I think it's worth talking about how a few design choices the developers made ended up creating game mechanics so obscure that it grounded any enjoyment I was having with the game to an absolute halt. My train makes its own rails! Now because Zellard is a small indie developer, I'm going to do my best at applying constructive criticism. It's not my intent to mock them for their efforts, as the game has an incredible amount of potential. I'm simply bereft at understanding how to become proficient with the gameplay, and a lot of that has to do with how certain mechanics are communicated to the player, or not at all. I'd like to start off by saying how great this game looks. The aesthetic is both grotesque and surreal. It's got that 90s Genesis game vibe to it, which is totally radical. This is radical. However, a game needs more than great visuals to be appealing. Where wheels tend to fall off for me relates to the following areas. Pacing. The first hour of this game is really, really slow and fairly uneventful. It takes quite a while to get going, and when it does, there's a serious spike in difficulty that leads to some royal frustration. Like the first 50 minutes of a Rings of Power episode, it takes far too long for anything eventful to happen. Give me the meat, and give it to me raw. There is no map. As you're stumbling around the dark from room to room, you'll quickly notice there is no map to reference as you try to orient yourself in any way possible. While you can fast travel between checkpoints, it's not clear where you are at any given time, where you've been, or where you're trying to go. Exploration is not rewarded. It dawns on you rather early on in this game that while the aesthetics of the world are very good, the world itself is completely empty. There's hardly anything to find, pickups are similar to help you in combat or like. As such, there's really no incentive to explore, and it makes the labyrinthian rooms feel like a chore to get through. Upgrades not included. I have no idea how upgrading a character or acquiring new abilities is supposed to work. Apparently, enemies will sometimes drop some kind of item, which you can use to purchase upgrades, but it seems like upon death, you lose those items. And unlike every other Souls like ever made, where you can backtrack to reacquire what you've lost, here you lose everything upon death. This makes acquiring upgrades nonsensical. Considering you'll die so frequently, it's like the game punishes you by preventing you from leveling altogether. Combat is too obscure. This is probably the worst defender for me, as I couldn't wrap my mind around some very obscure game mechanics in order to improve my skill with the combat. I've seen a lot of people compare the game to Hades, but man, Hades is on a completely other level when it comes to combat, as in, it's actually fun. Aside from the fact that this game feels like the developers devised some combat mechanics that made a lot of sense to them, their function is communicated to the player in such a bizarre way that it makes you feel utterly perplexed as to the best way to approach it. In addition, the lack of any codex to refer to later on means you had better pay full attention to those intro tutorials because you'll never be able to read through them again for reference. I felt like I had been given some kind of calculus equation 20 minutes in, only for the game to ask me to solve for Y around the one hour mark, expecting me to have memorized the formula. Bruh. As far as my understanding of combat goes, you deal consecutive hits in order to enable a special action when this meter becomes full. Enemies with the red icon over their head can have their attacks interrupted, but other colors cannot. Hitting an enemy with the special attack then fills these pips, which when full can yield a healing item, I think. That's really where this game falls over for me. I'm so utterly confused about how the healing mechanics work that it makes the combat incredibly frustrating. Mainly because you're so damn weak, having around five or six hit points that you'll basically die before you can ever fulfill all of the combat requirements in order to heal and continue the engagement. It's just so confusing. Why is being able to heal rely on so many dependencies? With combat being as frantic as it is, it's so hard to keep track of what's even happening before death claims you yet again. And what's up with the enemy health bars? In Hades and similar games, there's always a bar, which is super simple to understand. Bar full, enemies alive. Bar empty, enemies dead. But here it's like health bars are written in whatever language the predator communicates with. With random symbols and colors constantly changing as they receive damage. How am I supposed to prioritize enemies if even the HP bars need an alien translator to be understood? Bad idea. Burn it. 
all of these issues culminate in utter confusion, where I reached a point almost three hours in and just didn't want to play anymore. I simply don't get how to play this game proficiently, so unless you're a masochist with a photographic memory, I doubt you'll enjoy this one either. In its current state, I'd say hold off from playing There Is No Light until some serious quality of life improvements can be made. It's just too obscure to be any fun right now, and with other games like Moonscars releasing next week, there's better things to spend your time on. What did you think of There Is No Light? Do you agree with the issues I've outlined, or were you able to steamroll right through that game without any problems at all? Let me know down in the comments, as I'm really curious to hear anyone else's opinions on this one, especially if you're actually able to understand mechanics to the point of proficiency. Thanks again for watching, and be sure to keep an eye out for my streams of Moonscars starting next week on Twitch. Take it easy.